I have been playing the brand new game by Atlas called Metaphor Refantatio. It is out now on Xbox Series X and S, PC, Steam, PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. This video is sponsored by Sega and click my link down below to purchase the game. There is also a demo out right now and your save file will carry over to the full version of the game. Now let's go over everything you need to know before you buy, starting with what is Metaphor Refantatio? It is a brand new fantasy JRPG by Atlas, the creators of Persona 3, 4 and 5, set in a brand new world with its own lore and history where you are in a kingdom ruling over several different tribes and it has turn-based combat with a blend of real-time action. Let's push through! Alright, take this! Come on! Now my first impressions, I was already looking forward to this game, ever since it was announced. I already loved the aesthetics of the game, and I'm also already a fan of Atlas games. So I was very excited when Sega reached out to me, so that I could start playing the game earlier and give you this full review of what I think. It has such a believable world, and I immediately felt drawn to the lore of this world. Like for example, in the starting city, I saw these weird objects everywhere, and they turn out to be Mugla extractors. They're extracting the Mugla in the air, which is a source of energy in this world. Now story. The game opens up with you, the protagonist and your fairy companion traveling to the capital to deliver a message. Ultimately trying to break an ugly curse that has befallen your old childhood friend, the prince and heir to the throne. Also, the king has been assassinated. And so, people are fighting for the throne. But the assassinated king, with his magic, he is now up in the sky, telling everyone that now we are gonna have a royal tournament for the throne. And you decide to join that tournament in order to get the curse lifted with the recipe that Louise has so that you can revive the prince. You join the military and you get new friends and allies helping you out on your mission. The game is often telling the story through anime cutscenes and this is how all of the most crucial story bits are told and it's just as if you are watching a regular anime. You will become closer and closer to your new friends, increasing your bond with them in these friendship events. Also, increasing your bond with everyone gives you new classes, which I'm gonna get back to very soon. And also unlocking some new abilities. There is a ton of discrimination dependent on all the different tribes in this world. So in short, story is so good. I feel so immersed in this story and in this world. It is so much fun to follow along this gang of friends, getting to know them. And let me say this quite honestly. I think this is one of the better writings I have seen in a video game in a long time. In this game, everything is written so maturely and so good. Some of the themes are just really dark, which I like. And it's just such an adventure that they are going on. At one point, they are eaten by a sandworm. It's such an adventure. And this game is really story heavy. And you're in for a treat. It tells of a world united as one tribe. No discrimination, eh? Now, gameplay. I know you like it when I simply explain the gameplay to you, so that you know what you're going into. So Metaphor Refantatio, it does what a lot of good JRPGs does. You walk around, sometimes slide around to get to places faster. There are cities to visit, there are dungeons to delve in, there are some open areas for you to explore, and there are shops, equipment management, things to collect, people to talk to, side quests to do, and a world map where you can travel around using your gauntlet runner. <laughs> oh my god, the gauntlet runner, guys. That is your way of transporting yourself around this world. Also, later, you unlock fast traveling. But basically, these gauntlet runners, they are working as your way of transportation. Also, they are some sort of home base where you can do your laundry, read a book, talk with your party members, and otherwise just enjoy the ride, the bumpy ride. So the cities, they have a lot of people giving you the latest rumors and also some will give you side quests. And I always try to complete all of my side quests, especially focusing on the ones that has a deadline because some of them do, but do not worry. I can see some of you are like, 
I feel worried about that. There are not many quests with deadlines, in my opinion. And also, the deadlines are super generous. Because I was also like, oh no, am I gonna miss out on some content if I don't make a deadline for a side quest? But no, it's generous. Happy to say, happy to see that. So this game and this adventure it is structured with a calendar system. And I mean, we have seen this before. And it's essentially like that. But I wouldn't worry. Also, I feel like... The coding behind this game must be impeccable because you get to do what you want to do every day and still I feel and I get this feeling that I'm not missing out on anything. I get to see everything but in the calendar you're leading up to like some special event and you get to decide what you want to do every day. You can for the most part do two activities every day and that will progress the time. You have like afternoon and night, evening sometimes, but basically two activities every day. But I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything and this is just my opinion, but it feels like every player is gonna see everything but you decide which order you're gonna see them in. Also about the more open areas areas that you explore in this game. I am the first to say that I love to uncover the maps and you can do that in this game as well. Now 20 or closer to 25 hours into the game. I feel like I have not come across a lot of open areas so I'm hoping that further into the game there will be more of that because I'm a, I'm a fan of open areas and I'm a fan of uncovering that map. So when you are exploring, you find the chests and items spread around. Also, I am having such a blast when I am in dungeons. There are a lot of dungeons and almost labyrinths. And they are so much fun. I am speeding through them, hacking and slashing away. When I come across an enemy that doesn't get killed with my hacking and slashing, I go into the turn-based combat. And I'm gonna talk about the combat really soon. Other than that, in this gameplay section of this review, I wanna tell you that there is a lot of dialogue and it is all so enjoyable because the stories there are just well written. Also, I feel like I have to tell you about the Academia, which is this secret weird place. It's a very mysterious place where you are talking with this guy and his cat to unlock archetypes. And this is one of the biggest points of the entire game. I feel like one of the most fun things that is experimenting and collecting the different archetypes of the game. They work as classes. There are in total more than 40 archetypes to collect in this game. And that pretty much gives you a ton of options for customization. I love when games has cats in them. So that was also a plus. Yeah, nice work. All right. How's that? Come on. Let's talk about the combat. Okay, so this game is a mix between action combat and turn-based combat. And often you get to choose which way you want to fight. Personally, I'm loving both. Absolutely loving both. I love blasting through places, just hacking and slashing away. Also, the bigger bosses and the bigger fights when you're in a turn-based combat. It is turn-based combat perfection. Gives you a lot of different options and it's very tactical. So the classes, they range from seeker class, mage class, brawler, merchant, thief all sorts of classes. Personally, I am very fond of the mage class, like as a beginner class, uh, but now I am, I'm currently merchant class, actually. <laughs> The action combat is so fast and so satisfying. But I know some of you simply just prefer the turn-based goodness. And let me tell you, it is good. Still up? Take this! Still standing! I refuse! No holding back! Here! I can slash! I recommend that you always have a healer in your party, but also you don't have to have a healer in your party. You can inherit skills from other classes. So you can go around being a gunner and have your inherent skill being a healing skill. So this gives you plenty of options to play around with. Everyone can be the role of anything and everyone levels up both in their regular level, but also in their archetype level. There are elemental weaknesses, like we have seen from other Atlas games, and it plays a huge role in combat as usual. When there is plenty of enemies on the screen, I like to do the synthesis attacks that target everyone. They are like fusing attacks and they are so good. And needless to say, the synthesis attacks, they can be extremely powerful. 
the difficulty settings of the game that you have like super easy easy normal hard and mega super hard i started this game on the easiest difficulty and it is kind of easy so crank that a bit up but i mean you can play around with the difficulty setting there's no shame in playing on easy actually that makes it more enjoyable for some people and while i'm on combat i can let you know that you can also retry battles and do auto battles Sounded like superstition to me. Never thought it'd come back to haunt me. Presentation. This game is so beautiful. Even the menus I end up staring at. A lot. It's all very pleasing for the eyes. And I'm loving the overall color palette. I have not experienced any performance issues with this game. In fact, I feel like everything is really fast and snappy. When I'm in dungeons, I am blasting my way through. And I'm having so much fun. I feel like an unstoppable force. And I was amazed the first time I stepped outside of my gauntlet runner. Simply amazed. That does not happen often. I have played a lot of games in my life. So being totally amazed does not not happen often. The music, I gotta mention the music, which I think will be something people will talk about and remember for years, especially the combat music. It is so unique. First time you're hearing it, it's almost like bizarre. Hey, oh, 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 oh. so good it is so fun it's like i am looking forward to having that exact combat music playing The world is full of details and it feels very lived in. Another thing that impressed me were the boss designs. They are so grotesque. I'm not gonna show off the first boss of the game, but you're gonna understand what I mean when you get to it. I ended up looking at this thing for such a long time. And it's like the more I looked at it, the more bizarre it was. <laughs> also, the bosses are called humans in this game. Maybe that's a metaphor for something. Ever thought about that? So basically, look forward to the boss designs. I am happy with the character designs too. The music was good. Voice acting is amazing, actually. Amazing. A lot of different dialects, which I find so funny to listen to. However, I had to lower the music volume a bit because I felt like that was too loud compared to voices and sound effects. But I often do that. And you know that I often do that. <laughs> sound effects are absolutely satisfying. Presentation overall, very good. I am the last of my house. I am the last of my noble bloodline. And in the name of my people, I will strike you down where you stand. Marching in on us? I will fight with pride. By this power. Scour. So my verdict of metaphor fantasio. I mean, you can hear where this is going. This game manages to do something very essential. Something that every video game should do, and it does it brilliantly. It is simply fun to play. The more I play, the better it gets. I want to unlock more archetypes. I want to have every map uncovered. I want to have done all the side quests, and I want to level up my wisdom, etc. I think this game innovates with its action slash turn-based battle system and all the options I have for building my perfect party. And the story is so well written. It is also a lot bigger than you think it is. You're looking at 80 to 100 hours of gameplay, maybe even more. I mean, this game is up there this year. I hope that you will enjoy this game. Treat yourself with Metaphor Fantasio and simply enjoy it. I am so impressed. It is out now on Xbox Series X and S. It's out on PC Steam, PS5, PS4, 
and click my link down below, also in the pinned top comment. And remember, there is a demo out, so you can download the demo right now and have a go, and your save file will be transferred over to the full game. Thank you so much, Sega, for sponsoring this video. I am having so much fun in this game. It is so good. It was just what I needed right now, if you know what I mean. Now hit like on this video if you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Hi, I go